All right, welcome to Riding Shotgun with Tupper. Good to be back in the saddle. Been gone for a couple of weeks. Um, good to speak to you again. Uh, we went to, um, you know, we went out east and then out southeast. And um, uh, may maybe another time I'll tell you, but I wrote a column about it in the Herald Review. If you're interested, you can find it. But um, good to be back. Um, got back Sunday and um, yesterday Monday today Tuesday the holy moly what is the date I don't know whatever it is the 20 <laughs> 23rd 23rd I'm gonna go with 23rd and uh, yesterday uh, I went over to Champaign in the morning uh, to talk to Brad Underwood I uh, got there right at the end of practice and just sort of snuck in on the last couple minutes practice is really interesting um, the bits I've seen and um, it's just uh, very intense uh, you know I think players understand that coaches are making evaluations about which personnel groupings work best together and um, what combinations they like uh, they're trying you know one day it might be uh, Andres Feliz on the first team the next day it might be DeMonte Williams uh, you know how do they like this how do they like that which combinations account for enough shooting enough defense enough ball handling I mean um, it's you know something to see and um, to feel and um, and Brad was just saying that you know we need to play somebody else so you know you, you learn a certain amount going against each other but they need to go against teams in another uniform and if you look at the schedule you know that Friday night November 2nd is listed as the one exhibition game against Illinois Wesley and that's a division three team um, but a far more uh, important test will be this Saturday when they have their super secret scrimmage um, at home, State Farm Center against Vanderbilt uh, this Saturday. They had a two-year agreement with Vanderbilt. They played at Vandy last year. Play here. Vanderbilt, of course, uh, Bryce Drew, uh, the coach, and Roger Powell, former Illini, uh, the associate head coach, and um, an opportunity to test yourself against a, a, you know an SEC program and um, you know Brad just was making the point that you know we can tell guys to do this or that it's important that they be prepared for this or that but um, once they're burned by another player from another team that's when the importance and significance of what we've been saying sinks in and so every mistake made on Saturday is going to have value and um, so you know, he's not concerned about do they win the game Saturday, the scrimmage. Um, who knows how they are even going to keep score of it. These things are closed to the public, closed to the media. Coaches are not allowed to talk about them um, in advance. And he was certainly not talking to me about Val about um, Vanderbilt. He was talking to me about, about the need to play someone else and the need for um, success and failure against another team to really begin to underscore a lot of the things they've been talking about. So um, they're looking forward to that. Um, you know, I, I didn't see any injuries going on. He did mention that Adonis De La Rosa had a small setback as he comes back from knee surgery, had nothing to do with his knee. He had the flu last week, which knocked him out for about three days of rehabilitation. He was on the floor when I was over there at the end of practice and just uh, not, not been cleared yet for contact, but but just over there shooting, shuffling, you know, just being mildly active. And um, so anyhow, all that stuff's going on. And the other reason I went over there is because Brad's coming over here to Decatur Thursday night uh, for an appearance in front of a crowd of about 300 on my radio show. And he will be here from 6 to 8 p.m. You can listen to that on uh, WSOY, 1340 a.m. or on their... Um, app or whatever that would, would allow you to listen from outside the range of the normal broadcast beam and um, and then I believe that would be posted at a later date to a podcast so uh, you're welcome to investigate that now Tim and Tim Kane who uh, co-hosts the show with me will be will be him and will he and I are normally on from five to seven on Thursdays we will be on from Hickory Point Golf Course from five till six and then Brad will arrive and we will do two hours with Brad from 6 until 8 central time. Um, uh, Brad will bring someone over from staff. He didn't know for sure who that would be yesterday when we spoke. Um, 
and um, and we will talk not only about Illinois basketball, but we'll have a chance to preview the college basketball season. We'll have a chance to talk about any variety of topics. We'll take you know questions from the crowd. Uh, Brad often you know carves out time for signing autographs. I've got a stack of 300 of the posters. Uh, so we'll have those available for people. This is not a paid ticket event, but it is a an event that you need a ticket. Those tickets were available uh, through giveaways and WSOY and New Off Media Programming. And um, so, um, you know, I would love for you all to be there. I, I can't make that happen, unfortunately. Um, but we're really looking forward to that. Quickly about football, I also, after I finished up with Brad, I went over to Lovey's Monday press briefing. Um, hugely disappointed in their performance in the two games I was gone. Uh, we all, we probably all mis misunderstood who Purdue is and is becoming um, as they delivered a national eye opener on Saturday night when they're with their route of Ohio State. But um, for the homecoming game when they played, when Illinois played Purdue, we thought Purdue was just a middle of the run so so team uh, that would be a perhaps a coin flip game. Uh, for the Illini, and at least have an opportunity to pull some kind of an upset, and they were mauled, uh, knocked all over the field. And then up at Wisconsin on Saturday, um, maybe a more predictable result from a team that is nationally ranked, the Badgers. Uh, they generally get a physical edge on you and muscle you around, and that certainly happened in a 49-20, to 20, I believe the score was, victory over there in which Illinois changed quarterbacks in the second quarter when when uh, uh, A.J. Bush simply was not connecting on passes, they brought in M.J. Rivers. I think that kid has a lot of poise. I was um, all in favor of A.J. Bush um, this season because it's important to win some games this season. It's important for recruiting. It's important for ticket sales. It's important for many, many, many reasons, and I think he's the most prepared to do that. However, if he's not going to be able to throw the ball accurately, they, they can't be that one-dimensional. Their running game's been fairly good. Um, Reggie Corbin making a lot of big plays, but they have to supplement that with some passing attack. And um, I don't know what they're going to do Saturday when they go to Maryland. Rod Smith was pretty guarded about that. Lovey, of course, doesn't tell you anything. And so, um, you know, if it were me, um, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I just, AJ just does not look like he can throw the ball well enough and that's not what we saw in August in training camp and so um, we'll see where that all heads um, you know perhaps they start AJ in the minute that he begins misfiring they bring in Rivers or perhaps they just turn it over to Rivers at this point um, this season was not about building for next season it, it may end up being that way and it may end up being there already but the disappointing thing is not the quarterback the disappointing thing is the way this Illinois defense has gotten bullied and pushed and mauled and and um, and given up so many yards and it's disappointing for a number of reasons not the least of which is this is supposed to be Lovey Smith's strong suit and um, you know between Lovey and Hardy uh, Hardy Nickerson defensive coordinator who I love that guy I think he's one of the nicest people you ever meet in the profession but I don't see the evidence that he's impacting the defense in a positive way with the coaching uh, where are the schemes? Where are the, where's, you know, I look at, it's not fair to compare Illinois to Ohio State or Wisconsin or Michigan or Michigan State or Iowa at this point. But I think it is fair to compare them to Purdue and look where Purdue is. And look what, for, you know, I, I understand Jeff Brom is really good offensively at calling plays and setting up schemes and initiating a game plan. But look at that defense. That defense was flying around, making plays surprising Ohio State with things. Um, I don't see Illinois doing any of that. And so it it becomes a situation where you begin to look at the big picture of things and say, where, you know, I thought by now Lovey's defense would kick in. This would be the, maybe the calling card of this team. Hey, they've got a young but aggressive and effective defense. I, I just don't see it. I think they're so weak at the linebacker position. I see very little resistance up front. They hired a new young offense, a defensive line coach. What, where's the impact he's making? I don't see anything there. I think it's really um, disconcerting when you think about it, about where things are going. And I, I try to think about it in terms of what is Josh Whitman thinking. And, you know, I'll go back to that Purdue game. That was a game where Illinois had was coming off the 
the nice victory over Rutgers. Yes, we know Rutgers isn't very good, but nevertheless, um, and, and you know, it's Purdue. That's Josh Whitman's hometown, West Lafayette. And, um, you know, he's got big thoughts that day, I'm sure. He must have been so hugely disappointed at that outcome and that performance. And then uh, really not much better uh, in the Wisconsin game, particularly given the offensive turnovers in the first half. Um, and you wonder what Josh, I know Josh has been committed. I know Josh believes in coaching stability. I know Josh doesn't want to be reactionary, but um, he's also responsible for the big picture view and honest view of the program. And um, and so where are they and where are they going? And um, and are they, are they close? Uh, you know, I think Josh has really got to weigh all of those things. And and I don't know where Lovey is either. I think his buyout after this season would be like eight million bucks, and I think after next season it's like four million. And 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 what does Lovey think? You know, I mean that's one thing we never know. I think Lovey does such a poor job of selling this program. You know, I, I, it doesn't matter if you win enough. Bill Belichick doesn't do anything to sell the Patriots, but he wins all the time. But when you're not winning. You got to get out in front of some of these things and offer up better explanations and appeal to fans and and hang in there with us and 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 you know whatever the message might be and he just blows off every opportunity to communicate with fans and and through a media that is lightweight compared to what he was dealing with in Chicago with an NFL franchise I mean people are not raking him over the coals I think the time to do that is probably approaching um, and he won't like it, and he doesn't deal with it very well. But I, I, anyhow, I'm very, I'm very disappointed in the state of the football operation right now. And um, you know, you can say, well, okay, Lovey comes back next year. They change defensive coordinators, and we give it another year. And maybe that's what they would do. But who, who do you hire? Who, who wants to come in as the defensive coordinator if you say Hardy's not doing it? Who wants to come in as the defensive coordinator knowing it's a one-year situation? You know, do you promote Gil Bird? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm out ahead of it right now. I understand that. But um, it's very, very disappointing, um, the lack of any kind of resistance from that defense. And then, um, you know, sort of a confusing situation on offense right now with uh, quarterback uncertainty as well. So uh, we will see. Uh, at Maryland, Maryland is one of those games. Just in conclusion, Maryland is one of those games that we said, this is a coin flip game. This is a game Illinois could win. Um, and so here we go to Maryland, and I still think they're a middle-of-the-road team. But um, coming off of a, 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 a shutout, they were shut out at Iowa and had very little offense. And they post them immediately as a 17 or 18-point favorite. So that's what the odds makers think about this game. So uh, we will see. Um, thanks, people. It's good to be back. Um, Appreciate it very much. We'll talk to you again next Tuesday, and uh, have a great weekend. Bye.